Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Tzari Gimel, Daf 93 of Masech the Psachim. Uh, it's a good Daf today. <clears throat> the first part just really kind of like, I don't know, continues what we've been talking up until now. Pesach Sheni, Derek Rechoka, whatevs. But then we get to Shtikel Juicy Machlokas when it comes to um, the relationship between Pesach Rishon and Pesach Sheni. Are they separate? Are they sort of a Tashlumen of the first one? Are they... Uh, um, a, a fix in a takana of the first one. Machlokas Rebbe, Reb Nosin, and Reb Hanani ben Akavya. And then we get to a new Mishnah which discusses the concept of Derek Rechoka. How far is it really? Machlokas between Rebbe Akiva and Rebbe Eliezer, Ula and Rebbe Yehuda. So, um, nice stuff. Not particularly complicated. Some nice, just good, clean Machloks and just the way we like them. Let us get started on uh, Daf Tzadi Gimel, like five, six lines into the page. Tanur Rabbanon, the rabbis to what? One second, where are we? Yeah, good. Did I ever tell you this trick that that a, a friend of mine who I work with, um, I, I saw she posted on her Facebook once. If you add a W between the C and the O of coffee, it's coffee. Quaffy, and that's basically like they say it in Brooklyn. Quaffy, just like add a W in there. Quaffy. So you're also, um, I forgot what word I just said, but I like put a W in there also. I can't remember though. Let's go right there. Oh, probably talking. So what are we talking about? Just put a W between the T and the A. What are we talking about? It's a good trick. All right. So Tanur Rabbanon, the rabbis taught. Oh, maybe I said twat. The rabbi's twat. But you see, it works in like a lot of different places. It's pretty flexible. Tanur Rabbanan. The rabbi's twat. Elu she'osin es asheni. The following fellows bring the Pesach sheni. Azavim ve'azavos. Okay. Azav, azava. Ve'amitzoran ve'amitzoraos. Okay. Venidos. Uvo'ale nidos. Ve'ayoldos. Hashogin ve'anusin. Ve'amzidin. Ve'tomei. Wow. Okay, I guess we should probably go through each one of those. So Azav and Azava, we know what those are, right? Azav guy sees like Zavi kind of stuff either two or three times. Um, Azava, she sees Dam three times in 11 days between uh, being Anida. A guy who has leprosy, a girl who has leprosy, Nidos. Uh, that's Anida, Uval Anida, somebody who sleeps with Anida has uh, more or less all the stringencies of Anida. Vayoldos, a woman who gives birth, I assume that this means not just, you know, so for example, if she gives birth to a boy, so for one week she's Tame with like the equivalent of Tumas Nida, and then for the next 33 days she has what's called Tumay Tahora, where she's, uh, any dam she sees is Tahor, but she doesn't actually bring Korbanis until after the 40 days are complete. So I think that that entire point, she's that entire period, she's considered a Tvulas Yom Aruch. And therefore, I assume that she would not participate in the Korban Pesach during that entire time. Hashogagin Va'anusin, if somebody accidentally or for whatever reason was Pashit unable to bring the Korban Pesach, Va'amazidin, or even a fellow who intentionally didn't offer the Korban Pesach. Vitame, or somebody who had, was Tame la Nefesh, Tomas Ames, or was far away. In all of these cases, these individuals can bring a Pesach Sheni. Imkein la Manemar Tame. So, the Gemara asks kind of a, I don't know, to me it seems like a funny question, I don't know. So, I don't know, maybe it's not such a funny question. If that's the case, then why does it mention Tame in the, in the Pasuk? If it includes, you know, also Zavin and Zavos and Mitzoros and Mitzoros, etc., why does it specifically point out Tami the Nefesh? Salam and Emmer, Dibai the Mebid Brishan Losh of Kinale. Okay, to teach that if, so if, if he wants to do a Pesach Rishon, he's not allowed to. And I assume that that also applies to Zav and Zav in all these cases, all these Tumas, I guess. If they wanted to do Pesach Rishon, they cannot. Okay, why does the Pasuk say somebody who's far away? The fortune min hakaris to say that he's not chayiv karis uchman damer hurtzen like Rav Nachman who says that somebody who's far away if he wants to if he'll be able to make it back to Jerusalem in time to be able to eat the carbon pesach 
or partake in the Korban Pesach, so then he would be able to um, come back. We're going to see it's a machlokas of what exactly Derech Chokah is, but Rav Nachman says if he's able to get back in time, so then he can have other people slaughter the Korban Pesach for him. So what the Pasuk is teaching is that even though he can theoretically get back in time according to Rav Nachman and be able to partake in the Korban Pesach and have somebody else shechted for him and he'll just get back and be able to partake in it, even so, if he does not do that, he would be potter from Karis. Okay? Fine. Isha b'sheni mimachayva. Now, the Gemara wants to know, wait, is a woman actually chayevus in Pesach sheni? But we learned in Ebrei, so yachol lo yu osin esa sheni ele tmei nefesh, v'shari b'derech rechoka. We had learned way back when, on daf, samach zayin, is it possible that the only people who would do Pesach Sheni is somebody who was Tamil Nefesh or somebody who was far away. How do I know that it, that even a Zav or a Mitzora or somebody who sleeps with a Nida, how do I know that these people also would do Pesach Sheni? Tamil Omar, therefore the Pesach says, Ish Ish. Therefore it says, um, you know, Ish Ish to, to include any of these, uh, Tumas would also do Pesach Sheni. So, new, so, so what do we see? So, the only people listed in that brisa are men. So wouldn't that imply that women would not do Pesach Sheni? Women would not do Pesach Sheni? Lo Kasha, or Reb Yossi, or Reb Yehuda, Reb Shimon. The Gemara says, well, we just established yesterday that it's a three-way machlokas. I think it was yesterday. Between, um, what was it, two days ago? Who can remember anymore? Maybe it was two days ago. I think it was two days ago. Anyways, it's so a three-way machlokas between uh, Rabbi Yossi, who says that women are chayavos in Pesach Sheni, just like by Pesach Rishon, and Rabbi, Yossi, and Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon, who say that they're pturos from Pesach, well, they're pturos from Pesach Sheni, right? Meaning Rabbi Yehuda says that women are chayavos in Pesach Rishon, pturos, right, but um, rishus for Pesach Sheni, and Rabbi Shimon says that women uh, are rishus by Pesach Rishon, and by Pesach Sheni they don't do it at all. Okay, so that price it would have to be either um, Reb Yehuda or Reb Shimon who say that it's a rishus for women to bring a Pesach Sheni. Tanur Rabbanan, the rabbis taught Chayv Karis al Rishon Chayv Karis al Sheni. Divrei Rebbe, Rebbe's opinion is is that you Chayv Karis on Pesach Rishon and Chayv Karis on Pesach Sheni. Now it doesn't mean that you're going to be Chayv Karis twice. What it means is that if you don't uh, offer the korban Pesach. Let's say by on purpose, you decide that you're not going to um, do the Korban Pesach, you're going to be Chayv Karis. What happens if accidentally, or for whatever reason, you were unable to bring the Korban Pesach? Okay, so you're not going to be Chayv Karis. And now comes the Pesach Sheni, and you intentionally say, to heck with it, and you don't do it. Well, then you'll be Chayv Karis for the Pesach Sheni. Right? Each one is considered separate and has its own Chayv Karis, according to Rebbe. Reb Nosen Omer, Chayv Karis Halavishon Ufatu Ala Sheni. Reb Nosen's opinion is that for the Pesach Rishon, you'll be Chayv Karis. If you intentionally did not offer the Pesach Rishon, you'll be Chayv Karis. However, that's not the case by the Pesach Sheni. You'll be Potter. So, if by Pesach Rishon, for whatever reason, you were exempt, and now comes the Pesach Sheni, and you say, to heck with it, I'm not doing the Pesach Sheni, you'll be exempt as well. But right? there's only a Chayv Karis by the Pesach Rishon if you intentionally do not offer it. But by the Pesach Sheni, that's not the case. Reb Hanani ben Akavya Omer, says, actually, even by the Pesach HaRishon, if you intentionally do not offer it, you will not be Chayv Karis until you also intentionally do not offer the Pesach Sheni. If you intentionally neglected to offer the Pesach Rishon and the Pesach Sheni, so then you'll be Chayv Karis. But if you intentionally did not offer the Pesach Rishon, and then now it's Pesach Sheni, and something comes up and you're unable to offer it, you'll be Potter. Because you're only, right, you have to, in order to be Chayv Karis, you have to have neglected to do both the Rishon and the Sheni intentionally. Vazdu Tamayu, And they go according to the reasoning. What does this mean? Titani, as we learn in the Bryce, Gershon is Gayer, Ben Shnei If you have a fellow who converted to Judaism between Pesach Rishon and Pesach Sheni. V'chein Kain Sheigdil, Ben Shnei What if you have a little fellow who becomes a big fellow? Between Pesach Rishon and Pesach Sheni. Now he's an adult. He was, before he was a youngin, now he's an adult. Does he do Pesach Sheni? He was unable to do Pesach Rishon in both cases, either because he wasn't Jewish or because he wasn't big enough. And now he's Jewish enough. Now he's big, now he's big enough. 
So, Chayev Lasos Pesach Sheni Divi Rebbe. Rebbe says, sure, he's going to have to do Pesach Sheni because they're two separate Chiyuvim. And therefore, while they were Potter, respectively, for the Pesach Rishon, either because they weren't Jewish or because they weren't big, but when it comes to Pesach Sheni, um, they're going to be Chayev. Reb Nasen Omer says, Reb Nasen, Look, if you have something to do with the Pesach Rishon, so then you'll bring the Pesach Sheni. But if you have nothing to do with the Rishon, then don't forget about, you know, that then the Sheni isn't part of it. Meaning, if you were not Jewish for Pesach Rishon, so then you're not going to be doing Pesach Sheni, right? Or, um, or, or, um, if he was too young when he came to Pesach Rishon, so he's not going to do Pesach Sheni. What's the machlokus between Rebbe and Reb Nosson? Rebbe Savar Sheni Regal Bufne Atzmu. Well, Rebbe says that Pesach Sheni is its own separate holiday. And therefore, even if you were unable to do Pesach Rishon for whatever reason, because you weren't Jewish or because you were too young, that has no bearing on Pesach Sheni. And if now you're up for it, go for it. Reb Nosson Savar Sheni Tashlum in the Rishonu. Takun el Rishon lo maskinle. Whereas Reb Nosson says, look, the Pesach Sheni is a Tashlumen. You could make up for the first one. And therefore, but, but it doesn't, it doesn't fix it, right? So therefore, I don't know, I almost in my mind, if you were kind of like, um, like, like davening, let's say you miss Mincha. If you miss Mincha intentionally, so there's nothing you can do about it. If you accidentally miss Mincha, so you could do Tashlumen at Marv. You could make up for it and daven to, to Marv. So you're also okay. The Reb Nosson's opinion is that, you know, if, um, if for whatever reason you couldn't bring the Pesach Rishon, so you could also, you could offer the Pesach Sheni. If you intentionally didn't do the Pesach Rishon, the Pesach Sheni isn't going to fix that. You're still going to be high for the Pesach Rishon. Now, you'll still do the Pesach Sheni, but, uh, but, um, you know, you're still going to be high for it. Now, if for whatever reason you were not you know, shaykh to the Pesach Rishon Bechlal, so then you wouldn't necessarily do the, 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 the Pesach Sheni. They're not considered two separate holidays, right? It's basically an opportunity for you to bring the Pesach, you know, Sheni if you missed the Pesach Rishon for whatever reason. But um, if you weren't around for the Pesach Rishon and the Pesach Rishon wasn't relevant, so then you're not going to do the Pesach Sheni to, to be able to, you know, fill in the Pesach Rishon that you were unable to, to take, to, to offer. Reb Chananya ben Akavya Savar Sheni Takan to the Rishon. Whereas Reb Chananya ben Akavya Taka says that no, actually the Sheni is able to fix the Rishon. And therefore, even if you intentionally drop the ball by the Pesach Rishon, you could still fix it when it comes to the Pesach Sheni by bringing the Pesach Sheni according to Reb Chananya ben Akavya. Rishloshna Mikra Echad Darshu. And they're all learning out their respective opinions, opinions from one Pasuk. If you have a fellow who is pure and he was not traveling. Now, the other day we were learning this sort of in the context of, it's a pasuk that's written by Pesach Sheni, but it's referring to Pesach Rishon. Kilu is saying, if you're far away and you're Tame or you're Tame, so you can do Pesach Sheni. Now it says if you have a fellow who was Tahor, he was around, there was no reason why he shouldn't have done the Pesach Rishon. So then we're saying he's Chayv Karis. So that's really referring to somebody in the Pesach Rishon. So we were understanding yesterday to be referring it, or the other day, yesterday, two days ago, to be referring to uh, Pesach Sheni. But now we're saying, look, it's written in the context of Pesach Sheni, but it's it's a reference to somebody who intentionally didn't do the Pesach Rishon. So, so if you have a fellow who was pure and he was not traveling, and he didn't bring the Korban Pesach, i.e. the Pesach Rishon, so he's chayev, Karis to love it Berishon because he, he because he didn't do the Pesach Rishon Inami or else Korban Hashem Loikri B'Moado Basheni or if he does not offer the Pesach Sheni so then he's also Chayv Karis so Kilu if he was Tar of Derech Lohaya he's going to be Chayv Karis and then also, if when it comes to Pesach Sheni, Korban Hashem Lo Ikriv, he's also going to be Chayv Karis. So there's two, there's two separate uh, Korbans, and there's two separate opportunities 
to be chayiv karis. Now, fact the Gemara mimayda cheto yisa karis. Now, how do we know that when the pasuk in the context of Pesach Sheni says cheto yisa ha'ishau that that means karis? So ksav megadef anim uvarich hashen. Well, because Rebbe holds that megadef. Um, Somebody who like curse. He basically he says that Megadif and Mavarich Hashem are the same thing. So they're both referring to cursing God. And now by Megadif, it says specifically Karis. And therefore, says Rebbe, if Megadif and Mavarich Hashem are the same thing, so that means that you're going to be Chayiv Karis by Megadif and by Mavarich Hashem for cursing God. Uchsiv Mavarich Hashem, and it says in the context of Mavarich Hashem, Vinosa Cheto, that he will bear his sin. And that's exactly what it says here also by Pesach Sheni. Right? Cheto Yisa Ha'ishahu. So, we learn out Xer Shava of the Nesiyas Chet. And therefore, just like by Mivarech Sashem, it's Karis, because we learn it out from Megadev, which is the same thing according to Rebbe. So just like that's Karis. So also when it says Cheto Yisa Ha'ishahu, when it comes to Pesach Sheni, that's also going to be Karis. That is Rebbe's opinion. We learn out the Cheto Yisa Ishahu by Pesach Sheni from Venosa Cheto by Mivarech Hashem. Malahalun Karis, Avka Nami Karis. Just like by Mivarech Hashem it's Karis, so also by Pesach Sheni it is also Karis. Reb Nosen Savar. Reb Nosen learns the Pasuk like this. So if he doesn't do the Pesach Rishon, so then he's Chayv Karis, according to Ibn Nasan. The high key, because when it says, ki, nef, ki, ki korban Hashem leikri b'mu'ado, it means, lashon deha, who? It's because, it means because. V'achi kam rachman, this is what the Pasuk means. How come he's Chayv Karis? Da korban Hashem leikri b'mu'ado barishon. Because he didn't bring the Pesach Rishon. So that's Ibn Nasan's opinion, right? By the Pesach Rishon, if he intentionally doesn't bring it, so he's going to be Chayiv Karis. Haicheto Yisah Mayavile. Then what does he do with this Cheto Yisah Aishahu at the end of the pasuk, which Rebbe learned to mean that by Pesach Sheni Davko you Chayiv Karis? What 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 does Reb Nosson do with Cheto Yisah Aishahu? So Kasavar Megadif Live Lav Hanu Mivarech Hashem. Well. Reb Nelson's opinion is that Megadev is something else. As Rashi points out, it has to do with singing Tavod Azar. It's something else. So Megadev and Mivarech Hashem are not the same thing. So while you'll be Chayiv Karis for Megadev, we don't necessarily know that you'll be Chayiv Karis for Mivarech Hashem, for cursing God. How do I know that you're Chayiv Karis for cursing God? And therefore, how do we know that Mivarech Hashem is Chayiv Karis? Well, from Cheto Yisa Yishahu by Korban Pesach and by um, we make the Gzair Shava Nesiyas Chet, Nesiyas Chet. So, Mahocha Karis, Afasim Karis. Well, just like Rav Nelson says, this Pasuk is talking about the Pesach Rishon, that somebody doesn't do the Pesach Rishon will be Chayiv Karis. And it says, Cheto Yisa Aisha, who by Pesach Rishon, which is Karis. And it also says, Venosa Cheto by Mvarach Sashem. That is how we know that Mvarach Sashem is a Chiyuv Karis from here because it's separate from Megade. Reb Chanani ben Akavi Savar. And now Reb Chanani ben Akavi holds. Right, because Reb Chanani ben Akavi's opinion is that even if intentionally you did not bring the Pesach Rishon, you're only going to be Chayv Karis if you also intentionally did not do the Pesach Sheni. So Vechodel Asos a Pesach. So when it says, that by the Pesach Rishon, that if you intentionally don't bring it, you're going to be, uh, uh, so in you're going to be Chayv Karis, but that's only, that's only if you also neglect to bring the Korban, right, right, to bring the Pesach Sheni. Okay? So that is, um, Mchanani ben Akavi's opinion. What does he do with Cheto Yisa Aisha Hahu? Hahu? At the end of that Pasuk, so the same thing that Reb Nelson does, Kedamar, uh, Kedamarn. That, to teach that Mivarech Hashem is Chayv Karis, just like Reb Nelson, that, that, uh, Megadev and Mivarech Hashem are separate in Yonim. So, how do you know that Mivarech Hashem is Chayv Karis? Well, it says in the context of Pesach Rishon, that if you don't do it, and you also don't do the Pesach Sheni, 
you're going to be chayev karis. So the same thing, and it says chato yisa ishahu. So also v'nosa chato by mivarech zashem is a chiyuv karis. Hilkach. Now the Gemara gives us a little quiz. Hazid pozel vaze. So what happens if a fellow intentionally does not bring the korban pesach by the Korb, by, by the pesach rishon and the pesach sheni? No. What is it? Who would say what? Tivrehako chayev. Everyone agrees that you're going to be chayev. Even Reb Chanani ben Akavi is the most lenient. He says if you neglect to offer both the Pesach Rishon and the Pesach Sheni intentionally, you're going to be Chayv Kars. Shagog Bazel Vazet Devi Akopater. Now, if you by accident didn't bring the Pesach Rishon and then by the Pesach Sheni, you also by accident didn't bring it, well, then everyone says that you're going to be Potter. It was an accident. Now, Hazid Barishon Vashagog Basheni. What if he intentionally neglected to bring the Pesach Rishon but by accident did not bring the Pesach Sheni? So, Rebbe, of course, is going to say he's chayv karis. Reb Nosen is going to say he's chayv karis. Um, Reb Hanani ben Akavi is going to say he's going to be potter because you'd only be chayv if chayv karis if you intentionally did not offer both of them. But here, the second one was a mistake. Right, so, the Rebbe, the Reb Nosen, mechayve, the Reb Hanani ben Akavi, potter. Shagag barishon vezid basheni. What if you made a mistake by the Pesach rishon but you were bemazed by the Pesach Sheni. So, no, what's, what, who's going to say what? Rebbe's going to say that you're Chayv because he, he, bring, he said, treats them separately. So, you're going to be Chayv for the Pesach Sheni. Reb Nelson says that you can only be Chayv for the Pesach Rishon, not for the Pesach Sheni. And Reb Hanani ben Akavya also says that you're only Chayv if you intentionally missed Rishon and Sheni. So, the Rebbe Chayv, the Reb Nelson, Reb Hanani ben Akavya Potter. Okay, fine, very good. Nice three-way machlokas. Always fun. Okay, now we, move on, now we move on to a new Mishnah that discusses Derech Rechoka when it comes to Korban Pesach, Sheni. What exactly is, well, Pesach Rishon and Sheni, I guess, that if you're Derech Rechoka, you don't bring the Pesach Rishon and you do Pesach Sheni. Um, of course, we have the Machlokas about can you do Pesach Rishon? Whatevs. What exactly is Derech Rechoka? So, Ezri Derech Rechoka. Menomodim v'lachutz uchmidas l'choruach de Rebbe Kiva. Says Rebbe Kiva, modi'in. The city of Modi'in, that is the cutoff. If you are closer than Modi'in, you are considered close enough to Jerusalem. If you are further than Modi'in, you are considered far enough from Jerusalem. And it says that distance in all directions. The, if you, I guess, take a compass, a very, very large compass, and you um, draw a circle from Modi'in around Jerusalem. That's a very, very, very interesting opinion. Says Rabbi Eliezer, it's from the threshold of the Azara and outside. Interesting. It sounds like a huge limud schus, right? Meaning, basically, anybody who's outside of the Azara is considered b'der chuchoka, and therefore they're technically potter for bringing the korban pesach. Omer Biosi says Biosi lefichach nokod al hey. That is why there is a dot on the letter Hey in the Torah by Rechoka, Lomar Lo Mepnei Rachok Vade El Meiskopes Azor Velachutz to indicate that when it says far away, it doesn't. It's like far away with a wink. It doesn't really mean that you're so far. You're literally just outside of the Azara. Very very interesting. Omer Ula says the Gemara Menamodim Li Yerushalayim Chamisha Aser Milin Havya says Ula that from Modi'in to Jerusalem it's is fifteen mil. Okay, a mil is something like half a mile. I believe. I think a little bit more. So, Savala, Kiyadam Rabba Babachana Amr Yochanan. So now, Ula, who says that Modi'in, which is considered Derek Rechoka, is 15 mil away, he holds like Rabbi uh, Babachana says the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Kam Mahalik Adam Biyom. How far can a fellow walk in one day? Asara Parsaos, the answer is 10 Parsaos, which is 40 mil. 4 mil in a Parsa, 10 Parsaos is 40 mil, and now we break it down further. So from Alosa Shachar until Hinetzachama, you can walk five mil. From Shkiasachama to Tesa Kochavim, you could walk another five mil. Pashula Tlosin, which means that you have thirty mil remaining for the entire day from Nates Achama until Shkia. Chamesar mitzafra lefagod yoma v'chamesar mifagod yoma leorta. 
And that means that if we take a look at the 30 mil from Neitzacham until Shkias, from what? Yeah, from Neitzacham until Shkias Acham, that's 30 mil. So if you divide that in half, basically in the morning you could walk 15 mil, the afternoon you could walk 15 mil. Ula the time, and Ula is consistent with his reasoning. To Amr Ula, Eze, who, Derek Rechoka, Kosh, and Yochud, the Konis, Bishashrita. And Ula is consistent with his reasoning, which is that what's considered Derek Rechoka, what's considered far away from Jerusalem, if you'd be unable to arrive during the time of Shrita, meaning, and Rashi points out that really, Midi Oraisa, Mi Ikradin, you could already slaughter the Korban Pesach from, um, you know, the beginning of the seventh hour. Kilu, if we have our perfect day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., so from noon, Already, you could slaughter the Korban Pesach, and um, meaning halfway through the day. And what Ula is saying is, as long as you could make it to Jerusalem while they're still slaughtering the Korban Pesach, i.e., from halfway through the day until Shkia, so then you, as long as you could make it, so it would not be considered Derech Rechoka. Now, we just said that you could walk 15 mil in half of a day. I.e., if they're slaughtering the Korban Pesach from noon until Shkia, that's the amount of time that you could walk 15 mil, as we said that there's 30 mil from Nates until Shkia, and half of that, i.e., the afternoon, would be 15 mil. And Ula also says that from Modi'in to Jerusalem is 15 mil. So everything kind of adds up, which means that Derech Rechoka is if you would be unable to get from where you are from the beginning of the afternoon and arrive in Jerusalem when they are still slaughtering the Korban Pesach. Okay. Interesting. Omar Mar, we said earlier, we just said, that from Alos Ashacha, from dawn until sunrise is five mil. Minolan, where do we have a script, where do we have scripture to show us this? The is the Pasuk says, It says by Lot, when, right, in the context of the destruction of Sodom. So the angels at Alos Ashacha, they said to Lot, Lot, you better get the heck out of here. And it says, that the sun came out on the ground, i.e. it was Heinei Tzachama, it was sunrise, and Lot had already arrived in the place called Tzohar. V'am Reb Chanina, L'didi Chazili, Ha'u Asra, V'havya Chamisha Milin, says Reb Chanina, that he saw the dis- this place, he saw the distance between Sodom and Tzohar, and it was Taka 5 mil. So we see that from Alos HaShachar, when Lot left until Heinei Tzachama, when he arrived in Tzohar, so from Stom to Tsar was five mil. Um, so we see that you could walk five mil during that time. Gufa, we said earlier, Amar Ula, Eze, who Derech Rechoka, what is considered Derech Rechoka? Kol she'en yachu likanis b'sha shchita. Um, if you're unable to get there b'sha shchita, that's Derech Rechoka. Meaning, if right, any place where if you would leave where you are at noon and you would be unable to arrive in Jerusalem by Shkia Sachama, by, by sunset, that is considered far away i.e. during the time that they are slaughtering the Korban Pesach. Rav Yudah Amar Kol She'en Yochul Ikonos B'Sha'as Achila. So Rav Yudah says, actually, you're considered too far away if you're in a place where you'd be unable to leave where you are and arrive in Jerusalem while they're still eating the Korban Pesach. Meaning you have that night as well. As long as you can get there during the night and be able to eat the Korban Pesach with your friends, so you would be considered close enough to Jerusalem. Amalei Rabbah Le'ula says Rabbah to Ula Le'didach Kasha Le'Rav Yehuda Kasha Rabbah says to Ula look I have a question on you and I have a question on Rav Yehuda it's not a good question he's going to ask Le'didach Kasha it's a Kasha on you Ula Do'amad Kol Shri E'en Yochul Likonez B'Sha'a Shkita Ve'at Me'Sheretz De'en Yochul Likonez B'Sha'a Shkita Ve'kamad Shochtan V'Zorak Not Me'Sheretz do you remember three days ago on Daf Tzadi was it maybe four days ago I can't remember I mean, we're on Tzadi Gimel now, so that makes that three days ago, right? Anyways, so, yeah, that would be three days ago. Anyways, so, so, what were we talking about? Right, so now Tzadi, there was a machlokas between Rav Yehuda and Marav, we're going to get to Rav Yehuda in a second, and Ula, about Shochtim Vizark and Altamei Sheretz. Can you slaughter Korban Pesach and Tzurika Saddam for a fellow Who's Tommy Tumas Sheretz? So now what's Tumas Sheretz? Tumas Sheretz is a Tuma. It's a one day Tuma. You're Tommy in the afternoon, but by the nighttime, you're going to be able to eat your Korban Pesach. So therefore, 
Rav is pointing out that there's an inconsistency in Ula's opinion because on the one hand he's saying that you're allowed to slaughter a Korban Pesach for a Tamei Sheretz, i.e. when you have a fellow who's going to be unable to eat the Korban Pesach in the afternoon, right, he's going to be, like, he's not Shaykh, he's not going to be in a state where he can partake in the Korban Pesach in the afternoon, but by that night time, he will be able to partake in the Korban Pesach and Ula says that you're allowed to slaughter the Korban Pesach for this fellow and yet, his opinion when it comes to Derech Chokah is that even if he would be able to arrive at night, it's too late. Even though he would be able to partake in the Korban Pesach at night, that's not enough. He has to be able to arrive during the afternoon. So the question is, how come you have a Tamei Sheretz who is not shy to the Korban Pesach during the afternoon, but because he'll be able to be available to eat the Korban Pesach at night, it's okay. And yet, when it comes to Derech Chochok, we say, even though you might be able to make it by the night time, it's not okay. You don't have to be able to make it by the afternoon. Let's read it again. L'didach kach, it's a kach according to you, Ula, the armor that you said, Koshen Yochul Yikon is Bishash Shechita, that when it comes to Derech Chochok, you have to davka be able to make it to Jerusalem during the, during the afternoon, before Shkia. But if you're unable to make it during the afternoon, but you're able to arrive at night, it's too late. But what about a Tamei Sheretz? That Tamei Sheretz is basically not able to come in. It's the equivalent of somebody who's far away, i.e. he's not available in the afternoon because he's still Tamei. Yet, at night, he will be available because he'll be Tower by then. And you say that, yeah, sure, you can do Shechita and Zrika on a Tamei Sheretz. And yet you, you would not do Shrit and Zrika for somebody who is outside of Jerusalem now, but would be able to be in Jerusalem by the night time. Rav Yudakash, it's also Kash on Rav Yudah also because we're going to po- point out similar inconsistencies. Dharma Koshe in Yahu Likonis Bishas Achila that Rav Yehuda says that as long as the fellow can get to Jerusalem while they're still eating the Korban Pesach, i.e. by the night time, at some point during the night, so then that's okay. He would be considered close enough and you would shech the, the Korban Pesach for him. And yet, about Tamei Sheretz, the Yochul Yikon is Bishas Achila, Vukam and Chochtam Zok, not Tamei Sheretz. Yet when it comes to Tamei Sheretz, he said in the name of Rav, that you would not slaughter, right? You ain't Chochtam Zok, not Tamei Sheretz. You don't slaughter and do Zerika Saddam for Tamei Sheretz, even though he'll be available at night. So, Rav is pointing out that there are inconsistencies in Ula's and Rav Yudah's opinions. Omar Le, Ula responds to Rav, It's not a question on me, and it's also not a question on, on Rav Yehuda. Ula must have been visiting Pumpadisa at the time. Maybe it, was, maybe it was the same time when he was eating all of those dates and got a bellyache. The Didi lo kasha, der chuchok le tari ben der chuchok le tamay. Ula says, look, for me, it's not a question because Derech Chokah and Tameh are apples and oranges. Derech Chokah has its own laws. It's about how far away you are. Rashi points out that Derech Chokah, you could say that Davka, it's in the case of Asiya, right? And Asiya is in the afternoon, whereas Tameh is about eating and you're unable to eat it. Uh, you know, as long as you're unable to eat it, but if at night you can eat it, then it's fine. Kilu, he says, look, it's, it's apples and oranges. There's Derech Chokah, it's got its own halachas, and that's the Torah, that's for somebody's Torah, there's the halachas of Derech Chokah. And then there's uh, Ein Derech Chokah le Tameh. Derech Chokah is not shy to Tameh, it's apples and oranges. Tameh's got its own sugyas, kilu, don't mix and match. The Rav Yehuda lo kasha, and also according to Rav Yehuda, it's not a question. Tameh Sheretz, Rachman Adachia, what do I mean to tell you? When it comes to uh, Tameh Sheretz, the Torah says, don't, don't do Shechit and Zerika for Tameh Sheretz. According to Rav Yehuda, Tichtev Zapasik says, Ish ish ki etame la nefesh. That if you have a fellow who's, who's, who's tame la nefesh, milo askin and shechoshvish la liyos be'ever pesach, vavi lochi am rachman al litchei. Are we not talking about, as we've seen, that you can argue that it's talking about even when the seventh day of his tuma is on Erev pesach and he can eat the korban pesach that night, theoretically, he could be tower by that night, and yet we're saying do pesach sheni. So, Ula says, look, Rav Yehuda can argue that, yeah, sure, while the by Derech Chokha, if you can get there by night, that, that's acceptable. But 
Sheretz has nothing to do with whether you'll be able to be tar by the night time. It has to do with the fact that the Pasuk says that somebody who's a uh, Tommy does Pesach Sheni. Even if it's your seventh day of Tumah, you'll be able to be tar by the night, just like a Tumah Sheretz. It doesn't matter. You're still going to do Pesach Sheni. So, so Ula says, look, don't, don't ask kashas on me, don't ask kashas on Rav Yehuda. That was Daf Tzadi Gimel. Nice stuff, right? Why not? So what do we, so so let's go over some of these machloksin. So the relationship between Pesach Rishon and Pesach Sheni, right? We had a three-way machlokus. We have Rebbe's opinion, who is that they are separate, and therefore there's a separate chiyuv, separate kares for each of those two. Reb Nosson says that it's tashlumen, which means that um, if for whatever reason you couldn't do Pesach Rishon, so you could do Pesach Sheni. But it, you know, if you intentionally miss Pesach Rishon, you're still going to be chayiv kares. It says of Hanani ben Akavya, actually, it's um, a tikkun, it's a takana, it's fixing the Pesach Rishon, which means that if even if you intentionally neglected to do Pesach Rishon, you could make it up at Pesach Sheni. Um, and then we got into this new Mishnah where we had a machlokas between really Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Eliezer in terms of what's considered Derech Rechoka. You have Rabbi Akiva who says that it's um, from Modi'in and outside of that, to which there's a machlokas between Ula and Rabbi Yehuda about how exactly do we find this, define this distance? Um, Ula says, as long as you're able to get there during the afternoon while they're still slaughtering the carbon Pesach. And Rav Yudah says, even if you could get there at any point during the night, it would still be considered close enough. That was Rav Yehuda. Rav Eliezer's opinion generally is that you're considered with Derech Chuchoka if you are outside of the threshold of the Azar, which is a very interesting opinion. Because that isn't very far away at all. However, that was the Aftar I hope you enjoyed it very much. Have a great day. Peace out.